Welcome. I welcome you all to this lecture in the course Sandhi in Paninian Grammar. In this lecture, we continue studying at Sandhi or the vowel Sandhi. We have already st stated that at Sandhi can be broadly classified into two groups. The first one is Ekasthanika Ekadesha and the second one is Dvisthanika Ekadesha which is mentioned on this particular slide, Dvisthanika Ekadesha. Ekasthanika Ekadesha is one substituent and one substitute, Ekasthani and Ekadesha. We also stated that there are two instances of Ekasthanika Ekadesha, namely Yan Sandhi and Ayavayav Sandhi. Yan Sandhi is stated by the Sutra Eko Yanachi and Ayavayav Sandhi is stated by the Sutra Echo Yavayavaha and some more Sutras. We studied these Sutras along with the template examples and also the specific examples illustrating these templates. We also noted the fact that the concept of Savarana applies over here, the concept of Uddeshya Vidheya Bhava that applies over here and then the principle of correspondence. Also the criterion for the selection of the substitute in place of the substituents was also studied. After having studied these two instances of Ekasthanika Ekadesha, we then moved ahead and we started studying the second classification namely Dvisthanika Ekadesha, where you have two Sthanis and one Adeshas, two substituents, one substitute. Dvisthanika Ekadesha. This is stated by the Adhikara Sutra Ekah Purva Parayoho 6184. Ekah Purva Parayoho has got two Padas Ekaha 1 slash 1 of Eka meaning one substitute and Purva Parayoho is 6 slash 2 of Purva Para namely previous and later. Purva para yoho means in place of previous and later sound. What this sutra means is the following. One substitute takes place in place of two sounds, namely the previous and the latter. This dvisthanika ekadesha can be illustrated in the form of a diagram in the following manner. When you have A, plus B, A immediately preceding B and B immediately following A. So A and B are in close proximity, A and B are in the Samhita mode, then in place of A and B, in place of them both substitute one namely C. So the input over here is A plus B and the output is just C. So this is one sthani, this is another sthani, so they both are the sthanis, so this is dvisthanika eka adesha, stated from 6184 up to 61112. There are five instances of dvisthanika ekadesha. They are guna sandhi, stated by the sutra ad gunaha 6187. Vriddhi Sandhi stated by the Sutra Vriddhirechi onwards 6188 onwards. Then Pararupa Sandhi namely stated by Engi Pararupam 6194. Then we have Savarna Dirgha Sandhi stated by Akas Savarne Dirghaha 61101 and finally Purva Rupa Sandhi stated by the Sutra Ami Purvaha 61107. In this lecture, we shall be focusing on the Pararupa Sandhi and we shall try to 
understand this particular sutra engi pararupam first so let us study pararupa sandhi and the sutra engi pararupam engi pararupam is 6194 this sutra has got two padas engi and pararupam engi is 7/1 of eng eng is a pratyahara which covers the sounds in the third pratyahara sutra namely a and o so engi means immediately before eng that is immediately before a and o pararupam is 1/1 of pararupa pararupa means later form this is 1/1 so this is the substitute at is 5/1 of short or long a upasarga is 5/1 of upasarga which means immediately after a preverb or an upasarga dhatu is 7/1 of dhatu which means immediately before a verbal root ek purva parayoh is the adhikara which means one substitute in place of two namely the earlier and the latter substitutions having put all these meanings together we get the meaning of the entire sutra engi pararupam this is the meaning immediately before a verbal root that begins with eng namely a and o and immediately after a preverb that ends in short or long a in place of both one substitute in the form of latter sound takes place so i repeat immediately before a verbal root dhatau that begins with a eng engi and immediately after a preverb upasargat that ends in short or long a at in place of both eka purva parayoh one substitute in the form of latter pararupam takes place so we have a situation where there is a preverb or an upasarga at the end of which comes a and then it is followed by a verbal root or a dhatu which begins with either a or o so if we have a preverb plus dhatu a preverb ending in a dhatu beginning with a or o as the input and then the output generated by 6194 would be just a or o in place of both a and a or o so if we have pra plus ajate for example pra has got a at the end and pra is a preverb and upasarga listed in the list of upasargas pra para apasam etc followed by the verbal root aj which begins with a so now this is engadi dhatu preceded by an upasarga at the end of which there is a so pra plus ajate and now in place of this a and a we place the latter substitute so we have pra a and jate and therefore we have pre jate as the finally derived form now this is also the scope of the application of the sutra vruddhi rechi which brings about the vruddhi sandhi vruddhi rechi requires an a before and a following immediately so a plus a this is the scope of application of vruddhi sandhi but there are no further environments specified for the application of the vruddhi sandhi and the sutra in this case however there are additional requirements 
in terms of environments. For example, this a should not be any a, this a should be a final part of a preverb or an upasarga. This is one condition. And this a should not be part of any element, it should be part of the verbal element only. So, these specific environments, these restricted domains of application are there and therefore this rule cancels 6188 and therefore in this case we do not have vriddhi but we have only the pararupa. In the other domains vriddhi rechi would however apply. After having seen the main sutra stating the pararupa sandhi, let us now also examine some other vartika statements stating the pararupa sandhi and these statements are extremely important. These are the three vartikas that we shall be studying now. The first one is eve chani yoge. The second one is shakandhvadishu pararupam vachyam. And the third one is otvoshthayoho samase va. Now these vartikas they talk about some special forms that cannot be covered by the earlier rules. And so these are the exceptions to the rules that were stated before. As far as Dvistharika Eka Adesha is concerned. Let us study these Vartikas one by one. First let us study Eve Chani Yoge. This Vartika has got three padas, Eve, Cha and Aniyoge. Eve is 7 slash 1 of Eva and this Eva stands for its own form. So Eve means immediately before Eva. Cha means and and Aniyoga. Aniyoge is 7 slash 1 of Aniyoga. A niyoga has got two components, a and niyoga. Niyoga is determination, a niyoga is absence of determination or other than this determination. So, a niyoga means in the sense of other than determination. One does not want to emphasize, one does not want to determine in that sense. Eva generally has got this particular meaning of an emphasis or determination. Eva qualifies the Visheshana, also the Visheshya and sometimes the main verb in the sentence. Accordingly, determination as well as emphasis is generated and elimination of several options happen. Now here the Vartika is saying that when the word eva is used not in this particular sense which is its usual sense then this eva is subject to the pararupa sandhi. So the meaning of this vartika is the following. In the sense of non-determination when immediately before the word eva appears a word ending in a then in place of both is substituted the latter sound that is a. I repeat in the sense of non-determination a niyoge when immediately before the word eva, eva appears a word ending in a. In place of both eka purva parayoho is substituted the latter sound the pararupa namely a in this particular case. Here are the examples. In the sense of anavaklupti, non-determination, which is expressed through the sentence wherever you will eat, where there is no determination of the place of eating. And so you have kva, a separate pada, followed by eva, another separate pada, followed by the verb, namely a separate pada called 
bhokshyase kva eva bhokshyase now in this case actually kva plus eva this is the scope of application of the vriddhi sandhi but because of this particular vartika vriddhi sandhi will not take place as far as vriddhi sandhi is concerned the sutra vriddhi rechi applies and it has got the scope which is very general it requires a before and followed by a and then in place of a and a you substitute vriddhi that's all that is i it doesn't require some further conditions like the meaning condition etc in this case however we do require all such other conditions as well like for example anavaklupti as the meaning is required over here as an input or although at the back stage that still acts and in this case now there is pararupa sandhi that is going to take place so in place of this a and a the substitution is a so you have kv a and v and finally you have kvev bhokshyase as the finally generated form however when you have determination when you say tava plus eva tava plus eva here again a comes at the end of the pada followed by a now since this is determination that the speaker wants to convey eva chani yoga it will not apply and the vriddhi sandhi will apply over here and in place of this a and a this sutra will substitute the vriddhi namely the i so you have tav i and v and when you join them together you get tavai v this will be the output when the sense is that of determination or emphasis this is how avechani yoga accounts for the usage which has got changed in the course of time similarly you have the next vartika namely shakandhvadishu pararupam vachyam this vartika has got three padas shakandhvadishu pararupam and vachyam shakandhvadishu is the 7/3 of shakandhvadi shakandhvadi is a list of words beginning with the word shakandhu and so the list of words is called shakandhu adi shakandhvadi shakandhvadishu means in the list of words that begin with shakandhu etc the word continued is tehe which is 6/1 of t which means in place of t the term t is defined by the sutra achontyaditi 6 so this sutra is 1164 achontyaditi means part of any verbal element or word which begins with the final vowel of it and that is called t so for example in this in this word shakandhvadishu the final element is this u the one that comes before it is sh so this word is shopadha if you look at pararupam the final vowel is a in this p and the element that precedes it is this p so this p is the pre final element but the element that begins with this a uh, can be called t in this shakandhvad issue this u is the final vowel so the element that begins with this u can be called t now in this vachyam we see that m comes at the end of the pada and so the final vowel is a uh, so am can be called t this is how the concept of t can be explained now coming back to the vartika it says in the list of words beginning with shakandhu etc 
it is observed that in place of the T element and the latter sound, it could be any latter sound, the latter form is substituted. I repeat, in the list of words beginning with Shakandhu, it is observed that in place of the T element and the latter sound, the latter form is substituted. Let us look at the examples. So we have Shaka plus Andhu, where A is followed by A and here we have two substitutes. Now in place of both, the Pararupa that is this A uh, will be substituted. So we have Shak, A uh, and Ndhu. When we join them together, we get Shakandhu. Similarly, Manas plus Isha. And so the T part of Manas is Us followed by E. In place of both, we substitute this Para namely E. So we have Man, E and Sha. Therefore, Manisha. Similarly, Patan plus Anjali and here An is the T part of Patan followed by this A. In place of both of them, we substitute this An. So, we have Pat, A, Anjali. So, we have Patanjali. This is the Pararupa. In place of An and A, we substitute the Pararupa, namely this A. So, we have Pat, A, and Jali. When we join them together, we get the word Patanjali. It is an important point to remember over here, namely that this class of words, list of words, is an open-ended list, also called Akriti Gana. What it means is that any similar form with this particular Pararupa Sandhi happening in the course of time can be put into this particular list. Shakandhvadishu Pararupam Vacham. And so an example is found, Sara plus Anga. And so there is A plus A over here, and which is substituted by the latter A, namely this Anga A. So we have Sar A and Nga and saranga which refers to the name of a bird saranga is a bird if this were not a bird then there would be savarna dirgha sandhi saranga and so on this is the purpose of this particular vartika it opens up the list which accounts for the usage that keeps coming into the language in the course of time this indicates that the language and the grammar is accounting for the new words that are becoming part of the vocabulary and also becoming part of the grammatical structure. Next we have another vartika, otvoshtha yoho samase va. This particular sutra this particular vartika has got three padas, Utvoshthayoho, Samase and Va. Utvoshthayoho is 7 slash 2 of Utvoshth. Samase is 7 slash 1 of Samasa and Va means Apsharali. Utvoshthayoho is 7 slash 2 of Utvoshth. So it means immediately before Utvoshth. Otvoshtha is made up of two constituents, namely Otu and Oshtha. Samase is 7 slash 1 of Samasa, which means in the compound. Va means optionally. Having given all this information, let us put it together and make the meaning of the Vartika. The Vartika means in the compound, immediately before Otvoshtha, that is Otu and Oshtha, when appears A, then in place of both of them, namely A and O, is substituted the latter sound, namely 
the o sound i repeat in the compound samase immediately before utvosht utvoshtayoho when appears a then in place of both of them ekap purva parayoho is substituted the latter sound namely pararupam in this case this latter sound is o here are the examples so we have sthula plus o2 as a compound samasa and in the samasa the first pada is sthula ending in short a followed by o2 starting with o so here we have a plus o this is the case for vriddhi sandhi to take place and for and for vriddhi rechi to apply but now because of this particular vartika first we will apply the pararupa sandhi and so in place of this a and o the pararupa namely this o takes place so we have sthul o to and because this is optional so the optional by default rule namely the vriddhi sandhi rule will also get applied and so we have o in place of both a and o optionally so either you have sthula plus o plus 2 or sthula plus o plus 2 and the output would be sthulo to or sthulo to similarly bimba plus osht this is a samasa bimba is the purva pada osht is the uttara pada a belongs to the purva pada o belongs to the uttara pada and now they are in close proximity because they are in samasa therefore samhita is obligatory and so you have a followed by o this is also a case of vridhirechi but because specific words are mentioned over here in this particular vartika so in case of these vartikas and these examples we do not apply the rules of vriddhi sandhi and so in place of bimba plus osht a plus o we substitute the latter sound namely the o so we have the output bimb o and sht optionally we also have the vriddhi sandhi applied and so we have bimb o and sht when we join them together we get bimbosht or bimbaushth but when it is not a compound for example tava plus oshtaha this is not a compound tava is the shashti ekavachana of yashmad oshtaha is the prathama ekavachana of osht in such a case even though a is followed by o there isn't a pararupa sandhi here in fact there will be the vriddhi sandhi that will take place so in place of a and o you will put vriddhi which is au so you have tau plus au plus shtaha that is tavaushtaha to summarize engi pararupam 6194 requires restricted environment then 6188 vridhirechi and so 6194 cancels 6188 in this limited or restricted domain or environment what is that environment a preverb ending in short or long a and the verbal root beginning with ing a and o is the only environment so we studied the template examples as well as the specific examples given in the commentaries in this context now we also studied some other statements given by the later paninian grammarians notably the vartika kara and these other statements state pararupa sandhi which further restrict with further restricted domains notably in specific meaning conditions we also studied examples of these statements now we study some more rules which list down occurrences of this pura pararupa sandhi in sanskrit thank you for your attention